what are the three stages that a file can go through like it. So before we are going to talk about this uh, three stages, let me tell you there are uh, three areas which in Git we need to focus on. First one is called working area. Second one is called staging area. And last one is called repository. And there are a few more area called remote repository. And before that, we have one more area called stash. Okay. Uh, we are going to discuss stash tomorrow, but let's focus on these three. First is called working area. Second one is called staging. And third one is called repository. Okay. So first one is working area. This is the simplest one to understand. But before that, I mean, anyone who is coming into the Git world from a different version control system. So for example, I started my journey from sub version and then I moved to Git, I mean, in way back in 2012. So in some sub version, you have a simple, uh, simple steps. First of all, there should be a, some remote repository, which will be hosted somewhere. You just need to do called sub version checkout to check out the file into your, into your laptop or desktop. And once you are done with your work, you just need to do sub version checking to check those files back into the repository. That's it, simple thing. But in Git, we have these different areas. So let me start first with the working. Okay, Working means your local laptop or desktop, where you are working in some project. So simple, simplest thing is, for example, you have a folder in your laptop where you are writing code, right? So that is your local area or a working area. This staging is something which throw off many people when they are starting their journey with Git. So staging, you can think of like an intermediary area. Intermediary area. So what exactly is this intermediary area is? So I can give you a simple example of like Amazon.com, right? So you go to the Amazon.com, look for the various product, and first put in your shopping basket, right? You put it in a cart. You do not go directly and pay for that, right? You go, you browse through uh, the various options. You put it in a shopping cart. You move it back from the shopping cart, right? And then you, like, let's say you selected 10 things, and then you check the, uh, you pay for like three or four things. So Amazon give you an option, like you have a cart area where you can select like which product you want to buy before you are actually buying those products, right? So think of the staging area is like those intermediary card area where you can check in your files. We will see what is the advantage of this, but just to build a mental model, this is like, this is work like an intermediary area and where you are putting your item. Okay, we will see this one just in a, one second. What is that intermediary area? And finally, it's called repository. And don't confuse this repository with like a popular systems like GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket. Repository is something which is local, right? You once you are done with that staging area, you say, okay, this file need to be checked in, or this item I need to purchase. I can push that file from this working area to repository. Okay. Git and GitHub comes under remote repository. It's GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, whatever those things are, they come under report repository. So once again, let me show you with the help of this example and what is the importance of this working area. But initially, you have this working area, which is your local laptop or desktop, where you are doing a development. Once you are done with that, you are going to push the file to the staging area, which is working like an intermediary area. Once you are satisfied with those changes, you are going to push into the repository which is still local in case you are working or you have uh, like this remote repository, for example, Git, GitHub, you then push those changes to the Git or GitHub. Okay. Let me show you with the help of an example, how these all things looks like. This one. 
So first command that in case of a git we all execute is called git init. And let's say this is testing git. So basically what exactly I am doing, I am initializing a git repository. I am creating a new git repository. And in order to do that, I need to uh, uh, use a command called git init. I can do it like this to create a new repository. Or I can do, for example, mkdir, which is all of you know, like a command in Unix. I can create this git testing hyphen git folder, then go inside this folder, testing git, and then execute this command called git init. Dot. But this is a simple shortcut. I can do git init testing git. And once again, the main use of this command is to create a new git repository. Okay, so whenever you are starting a new project, this is the first command you execute. So what this command will do internally that it is going to set up all the necessary files and directories for your Git project. And this is how it's going to keep track of your file. So let me show you. So this initializes the test, uh, uh, your empty Git repository. And then I can go inside this testing Git. If you look at here, you do not have any files or anything over here. But if you do ls-al, al is for listing the, all the hidden files, you will see that it created an empty Git repository. Okay. Some of you, you are doing it like this. For a few of the other folks, what you generally do, for example, in case of a case of a GitHub, you just go here, create, click on this plus icon. Okay and click on this new repository, right? And then you do testing, get the name of the repository. So both ways are fine. It's completely up to you how you want to initialize. And then I will show you like how to close this repository and all those things. But the main idea here is to, where is that? This one. One second, guys. Where I am right now. Yeah, this one. We created this empty repository, right? Then I spoke about something called a working area. So let's say I'm working on this project and I created a file called test.txt okay this is my this is how i am starting my coding journey right this time you are going to execute one more command called git status okay and at this point of time git has no idea about the uh, like uh, about this file so this is why that is why the git this is the untracked file for git okay now, in order to move this file from your working area to a staging area, you are going to execute a command called git and test.txt. Right? So now, you, if you run this command git status, basically status command will give you the information about the current status of your project. Okay? Is that file is tracked, untracked, the number of branches in your project, all those information is given by this git status command. Now, if you run this git status command again, you will see something different. Now it is not saying an untracked file. It's say, saying that changes to be committed. So now your file is moved from this working area to staging area. In order to move this file from this shopping basket area to the repository that, okay, I'm done with my work. I need to commit this file. The command you need to use is called git commit m, let's say, adding first code file. And now your changes are committed to Git with this SHA hash. And we are going to discuss more about this SHA hash. Okay. So now it is, it is done. So you have reached to this stage, this repository. In order to push this change to a remote repository, for example, GitHub or any other, you need to use one more command called git push. Okay, we are not doing it because we haven't uh, connected to the remote, remote repository and I'm going to show you how to do that. But 
that is all about this three stages of of file in a git we have this working area in order to move from this working area to staging area i need to use a command called git add right from staging to repository i need to use git commit and finally from this uh, staging uh, from this repository to remote repository git okay so once again everything is clear but they still i for few people who is i mean first time who is seeing git still the concept of the staging area is not clear right like why why exactly we have this intermediary stage and why we have this repository why we can't just push to the remote repository okay so i will pause here for a second and i want to hear your opinion why do you guys think we have this staging area and why we have this repository why we don't have the concept uh, i mean why we can't just put push from the staging area directly to this remote repository hi um so i think the purpose of staging area is that you may be uh, working on a feature where uh, you change many many different files um, but uh, you may not want to commit all the files at the same time. You might be breaking uh, down to smaller features and you want to check a portion of those files at a time. So that's where um, staging allows you to pick and choose uh, uh, the subset of files that you really want to commit while you're still working on um, some other files. And then the repository and remote repository allows allows you to um, basically track your own changes in locally in your repo until, say, you're ready to, um, say, wrap up the complete feature and then as uh, well tested, then you can um, push it to the remote repository where you can share your results with everyone. Um, but also at the same time, um, if other people are making their changes, uh, pushing it to the remote repository, it doesn't affect you, uh, your local repository immediately. Um, so you can decide when it's a good time to pull other people's changes to your own local uh, repo. Yeah, thank you, David. Yeah, that is perfectly a spot on. Yeah. So, like what David has said, staging area. So, we are not pushing all the changes in one go. Once again. Compare it with the Amazon's uh, shopping basket, right? In the cart area. So let's say I have from Git add to Git staging area, I have pushed code one, code two file, code three file, all those. But I am not ready with this code three. So I can move that file back from staging area to working area, and I can only push this code one and code two file to the repository. So that is one of the biggest advantage that you have a complete control like what changes you want to push and what changes you don't want don't want at this moment of time so once again what david has said rather than committing all the changes in one go we are trying to have a more con control over our burden history so that in future if we will see we will see that okay we have only had these changes rather than all the changes in one go right now, coming back to the second question of repository versus remote repository, that is where there is someone who said that idea of distributed version control system. Version control system, right? So earlier, in case of SPN, you must need a connectivity or a network connectivity. Connectivity. In order to get your changes to your local working area but here in case of a git you don't need that so if you want you can do your whole work uh, in this repository okay you don't need this remote remote repository this is where like david has mentioned if you want to collaborate with others and definitely in today's world you need to collaborate but in in case so the simple example which everyone give let's say i i have i'm taking a flight from here to some other places and in in the flight i don't have a internet connectivity so if i want to work on my project i can do that i don't need that remote connectivity once i will get the internet connection 
I will push my changes from this repository, repository to the remote repository. So that is the advantage of Git. Like I can do all of my work just in my local laptop. Once I'm done with my changes, I can push it. But at that point of time, I don't need any internet connectivity or a network connectivity. OK. Yeah, I mean, this was a lot of confusion for me when I started working on Git, like why we have this staging area or why we have this repository, especially for the people like me who came from the SVN where we have just two simple commands. But this is an important thing to understand. Okay.